In this video, I will explain how to use Vogel's approximation method to find an initial basic feasible solution to a transportation problem. So let's jump right into an example. Let's say we have this situation where we have three factories that produce some good, and we have four cities that have a demand for that good. So for example, we can see that factory one is able to produce a total of 35 units of this good. Factory two is able to produce 50 units, and factory three is able to produce 40 units. Similarly, we can see that city one has a total demand of 45 units of this particular good. City two has a demand of 20, city three has a demand of 30, and city four has a demand of 30. Now, within the cells of the table, I've listed the unit shipping cost. So for example, to ship one good from factory one to city one, it has a unit shipping cost of $8. And similarly, to ship one good from factory one to city two, it has a unit cost of $6, and so on. So what we'll notice about this particular situation is that the total supply, if you add up all these numbers, that total supply is 125. And we'll also notice that if we add up the total demand, it's also 125. So this is known as a balanced transportation problem because the demand is equal to the supply. So the idea here is that we want to fulfill the demand of each city and want to minimize the shipping cost while doing so. So here's how we can do that using Vogel's approximation method. We look at each row and we identify what is the minimum shipping cost. So in row one, we can see that the minimum shipping cost, the unit shipping cost is $6. Then we identify the second lowest shipping cost. So that would be the $8 right here. Then we just take the difference between these two. So eight minus six is two. So here's what we're going to write. We're going to say the difference, and we'll say difference sub one, because this will be the first iteration that we do. And this first row is eight minus six. So let's write a two right there. Now we're going to repeat this process in the second row. So we can see that the lowest shipping cost is $7. The second lowest is $9. So the difference between nine and seven is two. So we'll put a two right here. And then in the last row, we can see the lowest shipping cost is $5, and the second lowest is $9. So the difference between those two is $4. So we'll put a four right here. Then we're also going to calculate these differences across the columns as well. So let's write difference one. In the first column, what is the lowest shipping cost? That would be $8, and the second lowest is $9. So the difference between those two is one. In this next column, the lowest shipping cost is $6, the second lowest is $9, the difference there is three. In the third column, the lowest shipping cost is $10, and the next lowest is $13, so that difference is three. And in the last column, the lowest shipping cost is $5, and the second lowest is $7. That's a difference of two. Now what we do is we look at all of these differences along the columns and all the differences along the rows, and we ask ourselves which row or column has the largest difference. Well, that would be the four right here. So what we're going to do is focus our attention on this row, on this last row. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the cell with the lowest shipping cost. So that would be this cell right here with a shipping cost of $5. And what we're going to do is try to fulfill as much of the demand as possible. So the total demand that City 4 has is 30. So are we able to fulfill all of that demand using the supply from Factory 3, which is in the same row as this shipping cost? Yeah, because we have a supply of 40, so we can fulfill that entire demand. So we're going to put a 30 right here. We're going to ship 30 units from Factory 3 to city four. And we'll notice that that will fulfill the entire demand, so we'll cross that out. Now, if we use 30 units from factory three here, we have to reduce this 40 by 30. So 40 minus 30 is 10. So factory three has 10 units left that it can still supply to the other cities. And one thing we'll notice is that since the total demand for city four has been completely met, it means that we won't be using these cells at all. So we wouldn't need to send any goods from factory two or factory one to the city because the total demand for that city is already met. So we're done with that column. Now what we're going to do is repeat that process all over again. So we'll calculate the differences once again for the remaining cells. So for this iteration, again, let's look at row one here. The lowest shipping cost is six, the next lowest is eight. So that difference is two. In the next row, the lowest shipping cost is nine, the next lowest is 12, that difference is three. And in the last row, the lowest shipping cost is nine, the next lowest is 14, so that's a difference of five. And we'll move on to the columns. So we'll say differences on our second iteration. The lowest shipping cost right here in column one is eight. The next lowest is nine. So we'll put a difference of one. In the next column, the lowest shipping cost is six. The next lowest is nine. That's a difference of three. In the next column, the lowest shipping cost is 10. And the next lowest is 13. So that's also a difference of three. And we'll just put a little dash right here since we're done with this column. So now if we look at all of the differences on the second iteration, what's the largest? Well, we can see that the five right here is the largest. So again, we'll focus on the row that contains the five and we'll look at these three shipping costs and say which one is the lowest. So that would be the nine right here. 
So we want to fulfill as much of this demand as possible using the supply from factory three. So factory three, we can see its supply has, is only 10. So we'll use up all of that supply and then that supply will be completely gone. So if we fulfill 10 of this total demand of 20, we need to subtract 10. So we'll say there's still a demand of 10 that needs to be filled. And now what we'll notice is that factory three is completely out of supply. So we've used up all of that supply. So that means this cell and this cell will not be used because factory three does not have any more supply that could possibly be sent to the other cities. Okay, so now we need to move on to the next iteration. So again, we'll calculate the differences among the rows. So if we start with row one, the lowest shipping cost is six. The next lowest is eight. That's a difference of two. In row two, the lowest shipping cost is nine. The next lowest is 12. That's a difference of three. And then we'll go ahead and put a dash right here since we're done with this row. Then among the columns, iteration number three, in this first column, the lowest shipping cost is eight. The next lowest is nine. That's a difference of one. In this next column, the lowest shipping cost is six. And the next lowest is 12. That's a difference of six. Then in the next column, the lowest shipping cost is 10. And the next lowest is 13. That's a difference of three. We'll put a dash here again since we're done with this column. Now, if we look at this third iteration of differences, what's the largest value? Well, that would be the six right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the column that contains this largest difference and say, what's the lowest shipping cost? Well, that would be the $6 right here. So we want to try to fulfill as much demand as we can in that column. So the remaining demand is 10. So can that be met using this supply of 35? Yes, it can. So we'll go ahead and put a 10 right here. And that means our total demand has been completely met for city two. And then we have to reduce the supply by 10. So 35 minus 10 is 25. And we'll also see that we can X out this cell because the total demand for city two has been met. So we won't need to ship any units through this route. All right, so now we can move on to the next iteration. So the difference sub four. So in this first row, the lowest shipping cost is eight. The next lowest is 10. That's a difference of two. In this next row, the lowest shipping cost is nine. The second lowest is 13. That's a difference of four. And we're done with this row. And along the columns for the column differences, we have the lowest shipping cost is eight. The next lowest is nine. That's a difference of one. And then we're done with this column. In column three, the lowest shipping cost is 10. The second lowest is 13. That's a difference of three. And we're done with this column. So now what is the largest difference among the D4 value? So that would be this value right here, this four. So we're going to identify the lowest shipping cost in that row, which would be this nine right here. And we're going to say, can we fulfill as much demand as possible in city one using the supply of 50? Yeah, so the supply of 50 is greater than the demand. So we'll use 45 units. And we'll notice that the demand will then be completely met. So that will be crossed out. And we'll have to reduce this 50 by 45. So 50 minus 45 is five. And now we can see that the total demand for city one has been met. So we can X out this cell since we will not be using that. And now what we'll notice is there's only two cells that are remaining and there's only two possible supply values that could go there. So we can go ahead and just fill in those values. So for example, for city three right here, this supply has to be 25 because that's all that's left in the row. And similarly, the number of units that we ship through this route has to be five since that's the only possible value that we have left in that row. And we'll notice that this 25 plus five meets this total demand of 30 down here. So the total demand is met. So this will be our final answer. So to calculate the total cost, here's what we can write. The total cost is going to be the number of units shipped in each of the allocated cells times the unit shipping cost. So for example, we have 45 units that we're shipping from factory two to city one, and it has a unit shipping cost of $9. So we'll say 45 times $9. And we have to add to that we have 10 units going through this route with a unit shipping cost of $6. So we'll say 10 times $6. And then to add to that, we have to do 10 times $9. And then we add 25 times $10. And then we add five times $13. And then lastly, we can add 30 times $5. So now when you punch all of this into a calculator, you end up with a total shipping cost of $1,020. So that is how you can find an initial basic feasible solution to the transportation problem using Vogel's approximation method.